All right, so we're about to subtract these two fractions. And before you subtract fractions, just like when we add them, you have to have a common denominator. What we were looking at in this previous example over here and the one over there, one of the ways to get a common denominator is just to multiply the two denominators together. It may not give you the least common denominator, but it will give you a common denominator and that will still work. The only thing about it is that sometimes you'll have to mm, simplify more at the end. So let's just go ahead and multiply these two together and uh, get our common denominator. In other words, on the left-hand fraction, I would multiply 21 on the top and the bottom, 21. And on the right-hand fraction, let's multiply by 15 over 15, right? So this will simplify into, let's see, 21 times 8, 168, I believe, 168 over... Now this one I don't know. Let me call up the calculator here. How about a 21 times a 15? What do we got? 315. Okay. 315 minus 11 times 15. Let's see. That would be 150 plus 1565. 165 over, again, 315. So when I subtract it, I get 3 over 315, which reduces to 1 over 105. Okay. So, we, just like we, we did in the previous one, we could always find a common denominator by just multiplying the two denominators that we're given together. But it may not be the least common denominator, okay? Oh, oh, and, oh, I didn't plan that very well. So, finding the least common denominator is the same thing as finding the least common multiple. What a least common multiple is, is you start with one number, and you keep taking multiples of it until both of the numbers go into it evenly. You want the smallest one possible. So, let's try that on this. I've got this typed out, so I don't have to worry about like, getting off my screen and whatever. Okay. So we've got both the 15 and the 21. The technique here is always to take the larger number and start taking multiples of it until you find one that is divisible also by 15. So um, how about 21 times one? No, that's silly because 15 doesn't go into it. Okay, so the next one would be 21 times two, which is 42. No, nope, 15 doesn't go into that. How about 21 times three, which is 63? No, nope, 15 is not gonna go into it. So you just keep doing this until you find one. Oh, does 15 divide evenly into 105? It sure does. So 105 is the least common multiple, which is what we're going to use as the least common denominator. Okay, so let's redo this problem using the least common multiple instead of that 315 that we got before. So what would I have to multiply 15 by in order to get um, 105. Oh, probably need my calculator again. So how about I go 105 divided by 15. It's 7. It's the top of my, my 7. Since I'm going to... No. Oh, let's see. Let go back up here. So I'm going to multiply this one by 7 over 7. And I can see just because of what's right there, I'm going to multiply this by 5 over 5. So I'm going to write up top here. Um, I'd have 56 over 1 over 5 minus... 55 over 105 gives me my 1 over 105 that I got before. Okay, so there's the second technique is finding the least common multiple. Is that the way I'm going to do it? Probably not. I'm going to shortcut this least common multiple using prime factors. Okay, so alternatively to find least common multiple, you could factor both of the denominators, and then you're looking for factors um, the highest power of factors in each one of the original denominators. So take a look at this. So 15, of course, factors as 3 times 5. Okay, And then 21 is 3 times 7. So the least common multiple, this is the way you get it. They both have a common factor of 3. We're not really looking for common factors, but the highest power of 3 that occurs in both of them is just to the first power. So we're going to need a 3. So let's bring that down. Okay, I have a multiple of 5. I have a, a factor of 5 that needs to be in my least common multiple, so I need to bring that down. 
Okay, and then from the 21, I've got a factor of seven. It's gotta be in my least common multiple as well. And bring down my seven. If I multiply all those out, there's my 105. This is the technique that we want to use to find a least common denominator, whether it's in fractions or whether it's in algebraic expressions, okay? So um, let's, let's try this again from scratch on just two numbers. I've got 66 and I've got 60. Let's find the least common multiple. So we're pretending like these are the denominators of two fractions and we want to know what would the least common denominator be. So let's factor both of these first. So 60 is six times 10, of course. And then I got a two and a three and a two and a five. Okay, so let's factor the 66. 66, I got um, a six and a 10, uh, no, 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 no. A six and 11 and a two and a three. All right, so just like I did before, let's just list these things out. So 60 factors as, I have actually two times two, so it's a two squared, times three times five. There's its prime factorization. And 66 factors as two times three times 11. So whenever I go to find the least common multiple, let's just make this nice and colorful. Let's choose green. My least common multiple I need the highest power of each factor. So when I look at my twos, the highest power is to the second power. So I need a two squared in there. Okay, and when I look at my threes, well, I only have to the first power, so I need times a three. I've got a factor of five that needs to be in there, and I've got a factor of an 11 that needs to be in there. So when I multiply all these out, let's see, this is gonna be a, a four, times three times five times 11. Multiply these, multiply these kind of out of order. So four times five, I got um, 20 times 33, and that would be 660. There we go. But, I mean, like when I was multiplying that out, that's probably not what I would do. What I would do is I would look to see what I haven't multiplied to get the other number. So for example, looking at my least common multiple and looking at here, let's, let's switch colors again, why not? Um, red, there we go. Looking at my least common multiple and looking at my 60. What number is missing from the 60 that is in the least common multiple? It needs an 11. So this one would need a factor of 11, which means that I would be multiplying this times 11 in order to get my least common uh, denominator. Okay, if I look at the 66, what is missing? It's missing both a 5 and one of the factors of 2. That's 10. So this needs a 10. I would be multiplying this by 10. So in either one of these cases, that's going to multiply up to 660. All right, let's try this with some algebra. So find the least common multiple of these two algebraic expressions. The first thing that I need to do is factor each one of them. I want purple again, purple. Purple's the color of this lesson. So I've got 15x squared plus 45. How can I factor that? I can pull out a 15 and then I'd be left with x squared plus, I think that this is a bit of a typo. I think this is a bit of a typo, guys. Let me check my right um, Here, let me pause here. Let me fix this. And I'll come back and see what I'm just saying. Okay. Um, Exercise five, I want to find the least common multiple of these two algebraic expressions. So the first thing I want to do is I want to factor them. So the first one, 15x plus 45, they have a common factor of 15, so pull it out. 15 times x plus three. And I might do one more thing. 
Uh, you wouldn't always have to do this, but I want to make sure that you can see that it's very, very clear that this is a 3 times 5. I just factor the 15 times x plus 3. Okay, switch colors on you. And let's factor the other one. 3x squared plus 18x plus 27. Mm, looks like they all have a common factor of 3, so let's pull that out. So 3x squared plus 6x plus 9. And inside the parentheses, you should recognize that is a perfect squared trinomial, which factors as, bring the 3x plus 3, quantity squared. All right, now we are ready to go ahead and find the least common multiple. And if these were two fractions, this would be the common denominator between the two. Um, red? Sure. So the least common multiple. I want to find the highest power of every single factor, whether they have it in common or not. So I've got a 3. I've got a 5. These are both to the first power, so times the 5. Um, and then I have an x plus 3 in both of them, but I need to take the highest power, so it's going to be an x plus 3 squared. So totally, I'm going to go ahead and multiply those, the 3 and the 5 together. My least common multiple is 15 times x plus 3 quantity squared. If this was, um, if this was a common denominator then, these were on the bottom of a fraction, let's re-examine it, go back to the first one, what would I have to multiply the top one by in order to get this as the least common multiple? I would have to multiply, I don't need an equal sign here, maybe an arrow, this one would need a factor of x plus 3. Needs x plus 3. Okay, now look at the bottom one. The only thing that's missing from it is a 5. So you'd have to multiply the top and the bottom by 5 on this one. Needs a 5. Okay, so let me just kind of put this all together for you right here. If these were fractions, let's change colors once more. Blue. Let's say I was adding these two fractions together. I have 1 over, just make this very, very simple, 15x plus 45. And then I'm going to add that to 1 over 3x squared plus 18x plus 27. Okay, so we know how we're supposed to get the common denominator. The common denominator is that least common multiple that we found, 15 times x plus 3 squared. And what I found right here is going to help me find each of the equivalent fractions. So on the first fraction, what I would need to multiply the top and the bottom by is n x plus 3. So you'd have to multiply that one by on the top x plus 3 and on the bottom x plus 3. Okay, and then what we said for the second one, what it would need is a 5 over a 5. Okay, so then whenever you went to go ahead and multiply the or add these things up, multiply and blah, 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 simplify. First fraction would be x plus 3 over, and the common denominator was 15 times x plus 3 squared. And then plus, multiply the 5 over here, 5 times 15 x plus 3 squared. And then you would have a, a complete answer, a final answer of x plus 8 over 15 times x plus 3 quantity squared. And that would be your final answer. Whew, isn't this exciting? Right. So, sum this up. Least common multiple of algebraic expressions. This is the way you do it. First one, you want to factor uh, whatever expressions you have into prime factors. Okay, factor it down into primes. Then you want to take the highest power of each of those factors and multiply them all together to get your least common denominator. Okay, that's what we do. In the next video, we're actually going to do that and add and subtract some fractions. Right? Stay tuned.